five, maybe even 80 today. The weather yesterday was absolutely wonderful. There's no better way to start out a week with great sunshine and an exciting city. It is growing. Things are happening all over. And Saturday, I had the experience of uh, the grand opening for the Utah Valley Convention Center. And one of the exhibitors there was the gentleman sitting next to me, Mr. Ed Helmick. Did I do that right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. And I was very taken with what he was doing because I thought I knew a lot about my neighborhood. It turns out that I didn't know anything at all about a Springville Spanish Fork airport. And so when I saw that, I thought, well, I know they're not flying jets out of there because I haven't heard any jets that direction. So as I got interested in what he was doing and I had trouble getting to him, there were a lot of people at his table at the exhibit. And they weren't. They were so busy they didn't have time to come out and get on the air with me for a few minutes. So I got him this morning, and he's here with me for the next hour. And we're going to be talking about Diamond Flight Center, what it is, why it is, who it is, and everything that's going on with it. And I really appreciate your coming in. We had a good time on Saturday. A lot of people. I thought that was a good show, didn't you? Yeah, a good crowd. Good crowd showed was a lot it? of uh, interest in what uh, what we're doing. Of course, that was very pleasing. Well, yeah, it was hard to get to you, and when I did, I reached over two people to drop a flyer in front of you. And so I'm, I want to learn about this. Uh, Ed, first, though, I'd like to, since you're the chief operating officer and the person in charge and a pilot, uh, is this is not a commercial airport. It is a commercial airport. Tell me what it is. Well, it's a general aviation airport. Uh, the Springville Spanish Fork Airport uh, has, uh, has been there since the uh, 1930s. No kidding. Yeah, started by the uh, by the Woodhouse family. Uh, they've operated off that airport uh, for many years, and the grandson of the founder uh, of the uh, uh, airport uh, still runs a business uh, at the Springville Spanish Fork Airport, uh, doing aircraft maintenance. Oh, for goodness' sake! So, where is it located? I, I've never. I mean, help. I, we see a lot of small planes. I assume they were all flying out of the Provo Airport. Oh no, we're actually five miles from uh, from the Provo Airport, uh, as the crow flies, so to speak. You know, <laughs> um, and uh, we're uh, the airport is located uh, off uh, Spanish Fork Main Street, okay. uh, twenty fifty north, three hundred west. All right, uh, now wait a minute. I know where the fairgrounds. You go through Spanish oh, Fork. Oh, it's the other there. side. It's so you're going to come off the freeway, north. but you're going to go north. Yes, I know yes. where you are. Out toward uh, yes the. Um, uh, National Guard Armory. I have been out there, and now that you say that, I realize that's where you are. But I didn't know what was going on out there, and so now I'm finding out that you've got all kinds of things going on. And maybe we should mention the. Um, let's start with how you got in this. How did you, yeah, how did you get in this business? Oh well, I've uh, uh, as a child, I built lots of model airplanes and wanted to learn to fly, and uh, finally became a pilot and accumulated the various certificates and ratings that I needed, and uh, I've had a lot of opportunity to fly around the, the country, and uh, it's, uh, it's been a, a great life for me, and uh, so 2004, I, uh, I moved uh, to, uh, to Provo. Uh, Where had you been living? Well... Prior to that, I was in Hawaii for seven years. Oh, somebody's got to be in Hawaii. Yeah, running a program, a flight training program really? over there. Oh, what a lovely experience that must have been. Well, that was a lot of fun because uh, I was actually working for the University of North Dakota, who had a contract with the University of Hawaii to provide flight training. Ah, okay. And I was the guy in charge in Hawaii. So uh, it was kind of fun when uh, we uh, got those messages about uh, their uh, facilities being closed because of blizzard days. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and there you were in Hawaii. Yep. Okay, so you came to Provo specifically to open a, a flight school? No, initially to uh, work with the Utah Valley State College. Uh, I had uh, gotten acquainted with uh, the fellow that had started that program, Dr. Ron Smart. Right. And, I remember uh, his name. So uh, uh, I came to, uh, to work with him. Uh, that worked out for a couple of years. And uh, then, uh, when, when you say you're working for him now, he works with his students on campus. So was he? You were training kids at the airport. Uh, at the airport. So yep. he, he was on campus. You were out at the airport. No, he was. 
You oh, work the aviation you program okay. at the airport. Okay. Uh, UVSC now at UVU, uh, and uh, that's. But what I mean, it, the students came to the airport. Then. Right. Okay. Right. So, uh, that's uh, what originally brought me here, and then uh, uh, Ron and I uh, uh, left uh, UVU. UVSC, and uh, I was encouraged to uh, start uh, our own private business. Um, and so in uh, August of 2006, uh, with one airplane at that time, we uh, started the Diamond Flight Center. There you go. <laughs> Big plans, <laughs> and uh, away we went. You're living your dream. I am, absolutely. Doing exactly what uh, what I love to do. Uh, my wife teaches me, uh, teases me that uh, I uh, I don't go to work, I go to play. And, and you uh, agree with her. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love it. So, all right. Now, I've, you've done a couple of things that I want to make sure that we talk about. But let's let's get back to the very beginning because you said something. Um, I had children that built airplanes, but I don't remember any of them thinking they wanted to fly them particularly. Um, but you were serious about this from the time you were a little kid. And I have met other people that they become pilots because of that. They feel this is their, you know, their mission, what they want to do. So then I have to ask this question. Have there been any serious accidents or problems along the way? Because I'm scared to death of flying. I am a white knuckle flyer. I don't care what kind of plane I'm in. Oh, I feel the same way about I-15. Okay, fair enough. More people get hurt in accidents, you're right. Okay. The problem is people understand cars, and they figure they have to drive to get wherever they're going. They don't understand airplanes. It's true. It's true. So there's a fear factor right there. Yeah. All right. And so you have students. Um, let's just talk about the flight school, how you set that up, and who gets to be a student. I mean, you're not just working with UVU kids anymore. I mean, anybody can come because I watched you talk to some people. So let's say I want to come take lessons. Yes, we're not uh, we're not associated with uh, with UVU, uh, other than some of their students come over to fly with us. Okay. We are a private business. Uh, we have our own uh, uh, airplanes, our own uh, flight instructor staff uh, to meet the needs of our students, and uh, they can work on uh, all. Uh, FA ratings and certificates, the uh, private pilot certificate, the instrument rating, uh, commercial pilot certificate. At, at what point, going through all of this paperwork and learning, do they get to get in an airplane and take off? Oh, private pilot course? Yep. Yep. Uh, that's where it all begins. That's the foundation for, for everything. And uh, the... Uh, the solo is the first uh, first milestone. Uh, our students typically solo in about 12 to 15 hours. No kidding. Yeah. I'm scared already. <laughs> How many planes do you have out there? Uh, we have uh, seven airplanes in our fleet. Uh, our primary flight training aircraft is the Diamond DA-20. Hence the name of the company. Okay. The and Diamond Flight Center. Yes. Now, all I know is a Cessna single engine. That's what I know. What, and so what have you got out there that compares to that? Well, the uh, uh, Diamond Aircraft is a manufacturer of airplanes. Okay. Um, and they are a relatively new manufacturer. Uh, they brought uh, the uh, Diamond DA-20 to market in uh, 1993. And uh, I had the privilege of uh, being their first uh, demonstration pilot for that airplane and worked for Diamond Aircraft for three years and uh, fell in love with the airplane. It's a uh, delightful airplane to fly. Is it a single engine? Single, single engine. Single yep. Uh, bubble canopy, great visibility, uh, nice control responsiveness. And uh, one of the things I enjoy about flying is seeing the world from above. Well, I must say that that is one of the the best things about flying is that you're sometimes too high up. But overall, it is a great sensation to be in the air. It just scares the daylights out of me. <laughs> well, ab absolutely. Uh, everything looks so clean and sterile. Of course, the freeway does that anymore. So, you know, you have a couple of accidents on the freeway and you don't want to get right. out there. Um, this is a fact sheet that you have handed me. And so I'm, I really would like to talk to your partners in Diamond Flight Center, Spanish Fork. Include the captain, a captain with the SkyWest Airlines and former director of aviation science. 
at the UVSC, which is now UVU. Uh, mechanic. Um, look at all these. Now, are these people that work with you in this business? Well, those uh, those four uh, individuals. They're four, yeah, were, without were, name on were here. responsible for the creation of uh, of the business. Okay. Um, Aaron Kennington was a uh, a student at the uh, UVSC uh, program. Uh, Ron Smart recruited him. He's now a captain. Uh, for uh, SkyWest Airlines, um, and uh, he was one of the folks encouraging us to start the program. Uh, Ron Smart, um, who had started the uh, UVSC uh, program, um, was uh, has always been involved with us. Um, and uh, our uh, uh, mechanic, Ron Smart, uh, Ron uh, uh, Rick Strong. Um, has been active with us since the beginning. And our first flight instructor um, worked uh, after he got all his hours and qualified. He was hired by Pinnacle Airlines. That's a good hire. Yeah. And uh, so those are the those are the folks who were involved in the creation of our business. Well, now it says your fleet of aircraft uh, consists of a DA twenty C one, and it, that's called an Eclipse. Well, yeah, that's the name of it, like a okay. car manufacturer right. would. Give so us I, car and I, I, I recognize a Piper Arrow. I know what that is. And a Piper Cessna. I know what that is. Twin engine. Um, the students that... Well, I'm trying to figure out, because I've asked the question a little earlier, how dangerous is it or what have the near misses been? Uh, do you have kids that change their mind after going out up the first time? Or do they go all the way? Does everybody make it? That's my question. Oh, uh, yes, um, uh, you know most uh, uh, most folks do make it to the program. The biggest uh, uh, limiting factor is simply the cost of flying. Uh, operating airplanes, flying airplanes, uh, is expensive. Okay, well we've got that rate sheet which you were kind enough to run off for me, which I appreciate. Um, and so let's say that uh, they're going to take the program. The entire program is how many hours? Well, the private uh, pilot uh, course uh, uh, takes about uh, 50 to 55 hours of flight time. Okay. And that, now they've got paperwork because they've got to pass all, they've got to know this stuff before they get in the plane, right? Well, they can uh, uh, start their uh, their uh, flight training uh, immediately. Um, they do have to uh, pass a, uh, a written uh, a test that we administer before they solo. Uh, solo knowledge test. Okay. And before they take their final practical exam for their FA certificate, they have to pass an FA uh, written test. Uh, we refer to it as written tests. They're all on a computer now, uh, with a grade of seventy or better. And the uh, final practical test uh, is uh, a uh, oral examination by a uh, FA designated examiner, and then a flight uh, practical test that they must pass before they're granted their private pilot certificate. Okay, so I'm gonna ask the question again then. Do, I, does everybody get through this program? Do you have people that really can't do it? Because it sounds like you've gotta be smarter than a brick to go be able to do this, for goodness sakes. I mean, just not anybody walking out there can say, well, okay, I can get through basket weaving in school but I and I'm now going to go try this. They wouldn't make it. No, anyone of average intelligence uh, can learn to fly. Okay, that's airplane. my question. You answered it well. Thank yep. you. So, of average intelligence, we'll say that's uh, high enough not to hurt themselves. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, the ground instruction. Talk to me about that. Well, before uh, every flight, we'll uh, have a briefing as to what we're going to do on this flight following a syllabus of instruction. Uh, syllabus is like a checklist used in an airplane that uh, lists the order in which things should be taught. And uh, that will be discussed on the ground okay. as a pre-flight discussion. Uh, after the flight, there will be a post-flight discussion. Uh, there will also be a ground discussion about the required aeronautical ide knowledge items. So there's a lot of training. Yep. A lot of training. Now, I'm looking at the fees on here, and I don't truly understand all of them, but I'm making an attempt at it. 
uh, because you have standard rates and student rates, and uh, which is very nice. You give them a break of about ten, fifteen dollars on some of them. Yeah, it's ten percent. Yeah. Okay. And uh, but if if you say let's roll all this thing, I mean, looking at different prices, and if I walked out there today and said, okay, I would like to learn to be a, a fly a small plane. Um, from start to finish, what would it cost me? The private pilot certificate uh, typically runs about $6,500. Okay, so it would be in the, the time, the time period is over a period of what, how many months? Oh, depends on how often you fly. Um, if uh, Well, you've got to fly so many hours before you can get certified, right? Yes. Okay. But uh, here's, here's the deal there. Uh, if you fly every day, you can get uh, you can finish in about six weeks with your private certificate. Uh, so we have some people doing that. Uh, so for sixty five hundred dollars, they come out and lay that down. They fly for so many weeks, and if they come out every day, they can pass all the tests. And that's correct. They've got a brand new business going on, or whatever so, they're doing. Well, they can uh, fly as a private pilot, which means they can uh, carry family and friends. On flights. Okay, but not, I said business, didn't I? Okay, I take that back. So that would be private flight. That is correct. They, let's, all right, let's say they want to get into the business and become a commercial pilot. Yes, and probably about uh, 80% uh, of our uh, people that are flying with us are working toward being commercial airline pilots. That's excellent. I didn't realize this thing was down there. I can't believe it. Um, taking off and landing. I remember watching that when I was in high school with a young man that was uh, really wanted to be a pilot. And I went out to the old Salt Lake Airport. And uh, they'd touch and take off and touch. I, oh, it made me airsick just watching it. All right, now, you've got something coming up that I want to make sure we talk about a little bit here. And um, it's the safety meeting for Sp it's in Springville Spanish Fork Airport. It's on Thursday, May twenty fourth, uh, twenty fourth at seven o'clock. Who can come to this? Oh, uh, actually, anyone. Uh, the target audience is uh, pilots in uh, in Utah County. Okay. Uh, it's open to uh, to everyone. We uh, turn our uh, hangar into an auditorium, and. Uh, have a big screen at one end of the room and chairs uh, set and the up, whole setup. Uh, set up chairs. Okay. And uh, we do this every month, uh, except November and, and December well, that's because of the holidays. Yeah. But uh, the fourth Thursday of every month, uh, we hold a safety meeting for pilots, different topics, uh, different invited uh, speakers. Um, this uh, month, the topic is uh, airport traffic patterns. Uh, it's presented uh, by Dennis Seals uh, from the FAA uh, office in Salt Lake. And uh, that's on Thursday, May 24, at 7 p.m. And it's out in Hangar 49, and this is down in, they call it the Springville Spanish Fork Airport, but it's really in Spanish Fork, isn't it? <laughs> yes, that is correct. So I'd, I'd... Uh, however, the operation of the airport is shared by both cities. Okay. On the airport board, both cities are represented. But physical location is, is in, Spanish in Spanish Fork, Fork at the Spanish Fork um, Airport, Springville Spanish Fork Airport. And uh, that doesn't have an address on it. But again, if you're out to the north and come off the freeway in Spanish Fork and go north. That's correct. They'll find you out there. Yes. Because I, I do know where it is now. Okay. And I realize that. So, okay, traffic pattern operations uh, presented by Dennis Seals. Is this free? Yes. Well, that's great. There's so few things you can go to anymore. Okay, so this month's door prize is the aviation book entitled Speaking of Flying and consists of 44 personal stories, which I'm going to have you tell some of them, okay, uh, from interesting and unique aviators. Can we have that? Can you share some of that with me? We're going to go to commercial break, and when we come back, can we do some sure. of that? Okay, and this is sponsored by this uh, event on Thursday, May 24th, and this is this week coming up, right? This week? Next week. Next week. Next week. At 7 p.m. in the evening, it's sponsored by Diamond Flight Center, which is your business, and Intermountain Healthcare, uh, and uh, Utah Valley Aerospace Medicine. Now, that's interesting. Are these people that work with you all the time, or you went out and found them as uh, sponsors, or how does this work? Uh, yes, uh, actually, Intermountain Healthcare uh, has a uh, a department of aerospace medicine, and they do uh, FAA flight physicals. Uh, really? Yep. 
my goodness, I live right here and I don't even know all this stuff. And so, what? Did, okay, so they're going to do it a, a physical. Beyond that, well, they help uh, sponsor the uh, uh, the meetings. Uh, they uh, actually cover the chair rental for the uh, uh, program and so forth. Okay, I'm going to give a phone number for those of you that might be interested in becoming a pilot or know someone who would be interested in learning to fly and maybe going on to be a commercial pilot. Um, the address, uh, the phone number is eight zero one. 471-1304, 471-1304. Again, they're located in Spanish Fork at the Springville Spanish Fork Airport in Utah County. And uh, I'm very excited to know this is down there. Uh, fly training and aircraft rental available. So if they have a pilot's license, they can come out and rent a plane. That is correct. Is there any kind of shuttle that goes from your airport to the Salt Lake Airport? Any kind of a flight no. if people want to go up there? They do have that. At, I think they also have Frontier Flight now going out of Provo. So That's they put in a longer runway to make that available. And also down in, I understand, in St. George, they've got a new airport down there. Yes. So people are doing a lot more flying, a lot more private flying, it seems to me. That's partly because Utah is so gorgeous. How high can you fly these planes? Where can you go? Can you go up uh, over the mountains behind us? In Basically, these... you can go uh, any place you want. Over the weekend, uh, we had some folks go up to uh, uh, Driggs, Idaho, uh, West Yellowstone. Uh, we had uh, one flight that went down to uh, the Phoenix area and back. Uh, so do you rent the planes so they can do this? They have their own plane. No. Uh, our business is uh, aircraft rental as well as flight training. That is amazing to me this is going on. I don't know why I didn't know this, but I'm really intrigued by it. So sequence of pilot training to become a professional pilot. You want to run down some of those? I think they're interesting. Well, uh, to become a, uh, a private pilot, that's uh, the, f the first step, as we've uh, mentioned. And uh, uh, the location at uh, the Springville Spanish Fork Airport makes it very cost-effective location. Uh, we're typically getting folks through that fly regularly uh, in about 55 hours. So uh, we'll say 55 to 65 hours to acquire the uh, private pilot certificate. Uh, after that, they can start carrying uh, friends and neighbors on, uh, on flights and building time uh, that they put in their logbook. The instrument rating uh, allows pilots to fly in the clouds without having outside visual uh, contact uh, with the ground. Um, so for folks going on wanting to do commercial flying, you have to have an instrument rating. Uh, to get an instrument rating, you have to have 50 hours of cross-country flying after your private pilot certificate. So we have a lot of folks then that are making these cross-country flights for the purpose of time building uh, so they can get that 50 hours done and then concentrate on their instrument rating. Um, the instrument rating uh, requires 40 hours of training, 20 of which, of which must be with the flight instructor. So typically, uh, by the time someone finishes their instrument rating course, uh, and passes that uh, practical exam, they'll have uh, about 140 to 150 hours uh, <clears throat> uh, of flight time. That, now I feel more comfortable. they got 150 hours behind them. I feel yeah. more comfortable. Oh, okay. <laughs> now I might get in a plane with them then. <laughs> so the uh, uh, next step then uh, for the career-oriented person would be the commercial pilot certificate. Right. Uh, that requires, by regulation, uh, 250 hours and some more time-building flights, some more cross-country flights, and uh, there's specific uh, requirements and regulations that have to be met, and then some flight maneuvers that have to be uh, performed to uh, uh, test standards. Uh, so our uh, pilots do their time-building, uh, practice the required maneuvers. There's another written test to be taken, and uh, then they can qualify to do the practical exam, pass that. They're now commercial pilots, single engine land. Uh, 
all of your uh, airlines, they want you to be multi-engine qualified. So now how do they get so that? So now they get their commercial multi-engine land. Um, and we have a, a very nice twin-engine trainer, uh, Piper Seneca, uh, that's very well equipped. And folks can get their multi-engine private, multi-engine commercial if they so want. So they can do everything out there? Everything out there. Wow, I love we it. We even had someone the other day take the airline transport pilot uh, certificate uh, exam. That's great. I can't believe you're doing that, but I'm proud of you. Now, I want you to tell some stories. I want you to show this book because the book is for sale. And if you have any interest at all, the name of the book is A Passion for Aviation. So if you have a passion for aviation, <clears throat> you're going to want to get this book. And the only way you can well, get it. Well, this is what we're talking about. Right. Yep. And, and the only way you can get this is to call the phone number, right? Uh, yes, or <clears throat> stop by and visit us. Um, Just, I actually put this together uh, last fall as a gift to uh, uh, our students. Um, right now, I primarily work with uh, advanced students, uh, CFI students, students working to become flight instructors. Uh, and that is probably um, the most difficult uh, FAA test to pass. Uh, the FAA uh, wants to make sure that our flight instructors are very knowledgeable, very well qualified. Uh, and uh, you have to have uh, uh, been an instructor for two years, 200 hours of instruction given before you can uh, qualify to teach flight instructor students. So anyway. Um, now, the, I'm looking at your flight instructors, and these have all of the everything they need, of course, yes. to do what they're doing. I do, are they all still with you? Because I'd like to give them a high five here. Can we do that and say hi to them? Oh, sure. <clears throat> all right, Bob Moore. Uh, Eric Saunders, Patrick Almondson, uh, did I say that right? Yes. And uh, Matthew Pitts, uh, Matthew Holly, Rob Lamb, Jay L Leslie, Leslie, Eddie Nielsen, and Jer Mc Jared McSweeney. Hi, high five to all of you. Appreciate what you're doing. Uh, I had no idea. Most of us don't know. It takes how many hours to get all of this done. And then more hours to get more done and so forth. Yeah. Um, I, I do have confidence in our airline fly, uh, pilots because I have assumed they've been through all that you're talking about. But the fun part was finding you at the expo and um, bringing you in today. So we're going to take a commercial break. And we'll be back with you in a couple of minutes. So stay with us. This is Pat Sheranian. And my guest today is L, uh, Ed Hemlick. Hemlick. Helmick. Got it. Okay. Ed Helmick. All right. I'm close. You got it. Okay. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Thanks for being with us, and don't go away. When you think about an auto body shop, what services come to mind? Collision repair? Ding removal? Painting and detailing? How about headlight repair? Power window repair and carpet cleaning? Casey's Bend and Mend in Provo will take those unwanted bends out of your vehicle and mend it back to great shape. For 15 years, Casey's Bend and Mend owner, Kevin Stubbs, has been using his artistry to get you back on the road looking good. Personable and approachable, Kevin will provide a free estimate and offers discounts to students and self-pay clients, in addition to working with all the insurance companies. Trust your vehicle to a craftsman someone who will give you personal service and care. Casey's Bend and Mend, located at 85 East, 600 South in Provo. Give Kevin at Casey's Bend and Mend a call at 801-374-0930. You bend them, we mend them. Hi, I'm Roger Strong. I'm here to tell you about tidbits of Utah County. No death, divorce, devastation, or destruction. Just good news for good people. You'll find us everywhere in Utah Valley. In doctor's offices, restaurants, mechanic shops, anywhere that people wait. We have over 35 features of fun, family-friendly entertainment. To find a paper or to advertise, call Roger at 801-616-6288. Again, that's Roger at 801-616-6288. Or tidbits of Utah County, the happy paper for Happy Valley. Are you an athlete looking for a natural boost to your workout? Have you studied up on the benefits of nitric oxide production to your performance? Then you'll want to try Kayani's Nitro Extreme. Nitro Extreme promotes cardiovascular health and improved blood flow, supports muscle contraction and relaxation, 
as well as nerve transmission. I use Nitro Extreme right before I lift weights, and I've never been stronger in my entire life. If you don't try Nitro Extreme, you'll never know what you're missing. Call 801-362-9552 to order yours today. That's 801-362-9552. Hi, this is Pat Shereni, and we're back with you. My guest today is Ed Helmick, and uh, I've just opened his book and looked at some wonderful photographs. So uh, besides being a, a wonderful pilot and an instructor and a friend to all, he has this, the back of this book is filled with just terrific aviation pictures. But my very favorite one is the last one. It looks like a young boy about three or four years old, and he's pedaling his little airplane. I don't know that you can see this, but... It's worth getting the book to get it. He's pedaling as fast as he can go, and the little propeller is just turning away. But it's his expression on his face that's absolutely priceless. You would think he was up in the air. He's just really pushing to make this thing happen. Is that precious? Do we know who the little boy is? Do you no. know who he is? He just happened to catch this picture, but isn't that precious? Absolutely love it. Thank you for sharing this. And this is in his book, which sells for twelve ninety five. And you can get it by calling the phone number, 801-471-1304, 471-1304, are coming out to the flight school, which is the Spanish Fork um, Springville Airport. It's actually located in Spanish Fork. And if you get off at the main exit for Spanish Fork, instead of going through town, turn left and go north, and you'll see arrows and things leading towards the airport. It's the uh, Diamond Flight Center Airport, right? Well, no, and you're Diamond on. Diamond Flight Center is our business, yes. That's your business at the airport, Diamond Flight Center. And he was just going over some uh, statistics here that I thought you might be interested in because how many people graduate each year? And so you've got 08, 09 since you opened up, actually, almost. And so tell us what's happening this year. How many students do you have right now? Well, last year, um, uh, 2011, uh, we had uh, 41 uh, people receive FAA certificates and ratings. That's so great. we were real proud of that. And uh, <clears throat> so far, uh, year to date, um, we've already had 21 uh, certificates and ratings issued to our uh, students. Um, so uh, we're already ahead of uh, uh, last year. We're well pleased with that. And uh, the, uh, uh, the statistics uh, that we mentioned, uh, I was just commenting that uh, so far this year, four people have received their private pilot certificate, but we're working with an additional 12 uh, to get the uh, private certificate. Uh, three people received their instrument rating. And uh, we're working with another six students to complete the instrument rating course. Uh, commercial pilot single in your land, we had four people uh, get that uh, FAA certificate, and we're working with another four more. Um, the CFI, Certified Flight Instructor, uh, we had four uh, people receive their uh, uh, CFI certificate this it, year. Now, to, to be more. a flight instructor, you have to be able to fly, although you may not be flying, Right. Is the flight instructor, are they on the ground more than they're in the air? No, uh, it's a I mean, combination it's of... So of somebody's both. getting this so they can also teach and become um, certified to do what you're doing, basically. That, that is correct. Okay. Um, and the, the sequence of events, if you're going to be career-oriented, uh, is uh, typically you have to have a commercial license to be a flight instructor because you're getting paid to fly. Okay. You're, flying, you're flying for hire. Okay. And so uh, typically the CFI... Uh, Certified flight instructor job is one of the first uh, jobs that a young person gets to build his flight time. Good. Uh, to qualify for the time requirements to be hired by the airline. I think that's great. And the fact that you guys have it right down here in Utah County is amazing and fun. Um, I ran across <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> this in your book called A Passion for Aviation, <coughs> which you can go out and pick this up in Spanish Fork at the airport. Or you can order it, which I, the phone number again is 4, 801-471-1304. Uh, 
But these are aviation movies, and I thought these were kind of fun to, you know, we have a lot of people intrigued by aviation. So I'm going to hand this back to you because you're grinning so. And this obviously is a, something you enjoy, are these movies. And But I thought that, that you had them all listed there with a little blurb about them. And I'm curious, uh, do you have copies of all of those? And No, you, uh, you, I don't. You just over the years put them together? The, yeah, yeah. Um, most of these are, are available uh, uh, to rent. And um, being an aviation enthusiast, you know, got to have some aviation movies. So I put this book together uh, really of, to uh, share with our students the things that inspired me uh, and some of the aviation events uh, when I was growing up. Uh, and then my own personal aviation story, and then I just threw in for the fun of it some of my favorite movies. Name some of them, because I think they're fun. Oh, um, 30 Seconds Over Tokyo, 12 O'Clock High, The High and the Mighty, uh, Strategic Air Command, The McConnell Story, uh, which I found out is no longer available. So to say, these are old movies. Yeah. They're wonderful yeah. old movies. Um, mm. The Spirit of St. Louis... Uh, those Magnificent Men in the Flying Machines, Fate is the Hunter, The Flight of the Phoenix, the original Flight of the Phoenix. I started the, to say, not, not the, the new one. one. Yeah, yeah, the original is good. Um, Torah, Torah, Torah. Oh, my uh, goodness, I haven't heard that in years. Okay. And that was kind of fun because when I was in Hawaii, good. I got uh, sure, to meet some right of the there. people involved yeah. in the, the right, flying. Absolutely. That um, the great uh, Waldo Pepper. That's a good story. Yeah. Then these over here, you've got a couple more. Oh, Airplane, which is a hilariously funny movie. And uh, The Right Stuff, which is one of my favorite movies. It does pretty accurately portray the historical events. Uh, Top Gun, the flying scenes are pretty dramatic. Well, he I think he won an award for that, Tom Cruise, didn't he? Uh, yeah. It's a great show. Uh, Bat 21, the Tuskegee Airmen, and uh, the Aviator. So that's uh, the list. Which is the more recent one. Was that the story of How uh, Howard Hughes? Yes. Yes. That was interesting because I did know some people that worked on that film, and it was an interesting film. And uh, But all right, now you've got a gazillion stories. So let's hear some of the stories that have happened over the years regarding flight. <clears throat> Just any one that comes to your mind, or if you find one in the book, you said there are a lot of stories in there. Well, uh, I've uh, I've been very fortunate in uh, in my uh, flying current flying experience. Uh, a guy uh, growing up uh, with a fascination of uh, of flying. Uh, I grew up in Grand Junction, Colorado, and uh, in the uh, 1950s. Uh, and I uh, I remember uh, that in the news every week there was some aviation record being set, uh, speed record, altitude record, uh, new airplane, first flight. Um, so actually, I went back a couple of years ago and researched. Uh, is my memory correct? Was all that stuff really happening? <laughs> and it turns out it was. So uh, in this book that we were talking about, uh, A Passion for Aviation, I have listed uh, virtually all of the aviation events in the 20 years after uh, World War II. And wow, there was a lot going on to fascinate and excite a young man. So, uh, you know, there was the news, uh, media stuff, there was it, build and model it, airplanes. Was there ever once <clears throat> that you felt it might be more dangerous than just driving a car? <clears throat> Say again? You were so excited about all of this and such a passion for it. Did it ever occur to you it might be dangerous? Oh, <laughs> I suppose not. <laughs> <laughs> no white knuckles for don't you. Think about those things. Well, I that's don't, true because they're going to live think. forever. They're yeah, absolutely going to yeah. live forever. Um, Did you ever have any near misses? Tough moments. You know, I'm asked that question often. Have you ever, ever been uh, scared, uh, frightened? Um, and uh, I would say uh, no. I've had what the airlines like to refer to as abnormal conditions. <laughs> It's not well, an emergency. It's an abnormal condition. Abnormal condition. condition. Okay. <laughs> Tell me about one. But uh, if uh, if you understand uh, what's going on uh, and how to deal with it, uh, 
then you're busy dealing with it and you're not uh, in a state of panic. Uh, pilot training, uh, particularly your advanced pilot training, is about how to deal with emergencies. Speaking of that, would you remember the guy, the pilot that landed that plane uh, in New York on the, on the river? That's a river, you bet. Yeah. And I thought that was probably one of the rem most remarkable things we'd ever get to witness live like that, something that was just an amazing moment in history. Being a pilot, you had to be living that with him if you saw it when he was trying to get that thing down. Um, th there had to be a moment where you thought, okay, is he going to make it? Or He did an excellent job. But as pilots, we look at ourselves and say, he was doing what he was trained to do. Okay. Um, you know, the airline pilots, every six months, they uh, spend time in a very expensive flight simulator that looks and feels and flies like a real airplane and that they can create some potentially dangerous situations. And when you uh, say every pilot, do you mean every pilot? Every airline are, pilot. Every airline, commercial airline pilot or anybody, anywhere? They have to, or just commercial airline. Commercial pilots. airline. Pilots. Okay, so they set up situations that would scare the rest of us to death, and then they deal with it. Yes. Okay, so he was doing what he was supposed to be doing. That is correct. Interesting. Um, well trained, well qualified. Uh, okay, people. have you ever had one of those moments? Oh, I've had uh, a couple. He yes. didn't want to. He didn't want to share this with me very much. Is it? Well, it. Probably not as exciting as what you might like it to be. I don't know. Uh, I had one situation uh, where uh, I had just taken off from Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport, and uh, the throttle linkage came undone. <gasps> so we lost some power, not total power. and uh, uh, The mechanical failure, we'd call it. Yeah. So... Uh, uh, Told the tower we had a problem and turned back to the airport to uh, to land and uh, it was uh, uneventful. Um, I had uh, partial power and to get uh, to land I had to kill that power altogether. But I had eleven thousand feet of runway out in front of me. He and, floated uh, in. Yep. Ah, gives me chills to think about it. <laughs> so. No. No big deal. <clears throat> okay, so now the stories you have in here, are they about other flights or just news flights that you have found? Or? Well, there's the, there's the historical section here um, that fascinated me growing up. Would this be a good up. book for Dad? Oh, yeah. For Father's Day? This would be a good yeah. book. Um, and then there's the people that uh, fascinated me when I was growing up. Of course, uh, Lindbergh's at the head of the list, uh, Jimmy Doolittle. Um, and... Uh, uh, Chuck Yeager, who I've we had the opportunity to, uh, yeah. to meet and have lunch with, and that was pretty neat. Um, Igor Sikorsky, uh, his grandson came to town uh, back about 2005 uh, when I was at uh, 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 the University of uh, uh, Utah Valley State College, and I helped coordinate uh, that event. That was fascinating. Um, then there's some Alaskan people, because I learned to fly in Alaska. You did? And, well, you uh, didn't mention that. Yeah, that's, that's well, I could finally afford to learn to fly was uh, um, after I got out of graduate school and moved to Alaska. Why were you in Alaska? What in the world took you to Alaska? I'm always fascinated by people that go up where it's so cold. And no, yeah, now at my age, no, I feel the same way about the cold, but uh, <laughs> back then it was... Uh, well, now, you've got a couple of women pilots in there, too. Um, we don't hear too much about them anymore, anywhere. Is there a restriction against women flying at commercial airlines? There shouldn't be. Oh, no. So that's opened up. You only had one in there, and I just wondered who it was in this picture book oh. here. Uh, Jackie Cochran, I believe, who was... Uh, right there. Yep. Yep. Uh, she was... Uh, uh, actually very famous for uh, some of her uh, speed records. She was the first woman to uh, fly twice the speed of sound. Truly. And uh, did quite I think a I've heard her of, name, but it and, would uh, she have been actually, passing. Uh, she actually uh, pursued NASA for uh, uh, women in space. Uh, so Good. Do you ever uh, have that desire to be out in space? 
in 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 uh, oh absolutely on the way to the moon absolutely did you really well then why not well i was uh, a little late for that was it too late Did the time passed you by yeah. on that one yeah but if when you're up there by yourself i have to think that some thoughts do go through your head of maybe where could could we have gone there before it actually happened well, you know, talking, uh, talking about things like that, it's uh, absolutely a, a beautiful experience uh, to make a night flight on a perfectly clear night and turn the cockpit lights down way low and look at all the stars in the sky out there. And you feel like you must be part of that spaceship out there. It's just a <laughs> neat experience. I appreciate you sharing that with us. That's great. Well, okay. Um, I'm this. I want to talk about the book some more because I think this would be a really wonderful gift at twelve ninety five, and they can get the book by calling eight zero one four seven one thirteen zero four four seven one one three zero four. Make a great Father's Day gift coming up. Um, maybe Mother's Day another time, but I think this would be fun because you have put together a really nice slice of history in this book, as well as your personal experiences. Well, and let me add a bit to that. If Please, you mind. yes, absolutely. Um, I'm here on a page where I've got uh, several people that uh, I have uh, had the opportunity to meet and fly with. Um, uh, I've uh, I've really had a fun life in in general aviation. All my flight experience has been in general aviation. Um, and somewhat regrettably, no military flying, but I've had a, a wonderful life in general aviation. I uh, mentioned I learned to fly uh, uh, in Alaska. Mm -hmm. After my private pilot uh, uh, certificate, I got a seaplane rating and had a half interest in a Cessna 170 on skis and floats, you know, the typical Alaska thing. Only at Lake Arrowhead in California have I seen those. <laughs> and uh, then... Uh, I moved down to uh, the Navajo Indian Reservation, and uh, wait, there must be a story there. Why did you move to the Navajo Reservation? Well, actually, that was for a job, and uh, the uh, office had an airplane. Actually, they had a couple of them, and uh, so uh, I did a lot of flying with the U.S. Public Health Service uh, around the Navajo Indian Reservation in the Southwest, and uh, so as it turns out. Uh, I had about uh, 3,000 hours before I got my CFI, and that's backwards for most people. You said it had to be the other way around. Because you see most of our young people yeah. here, they'll get their CFI right after their commercial so they can build flight time. Okay. But uh, I enjoyed uh, this flying thing and sharing it with people, and so uh, uh, finally uh, I... Uh, decided to get my CFI and make all of my uh, coaching legal. <laughs> so I uh, got my, uh, my CFI in uh, 85. Uh, my private was back in uh, 72. Um, so uh, I, uh, after that, uh, I ran a large uh, flight school in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, then uh, was... Uh, actually offered a job in uh, with Diamond Aircraft in uh, London, Ontario, uh, but I was still based out of Scottsdale. And uh, they were bringing to market the new Diamond DA-20. And why and, is that different? Well, it was a, a new airplane, a new, new airframe manufacturer, a new airplane, uh, single engine, two seat, uh, flight training and light touring airplane. And uh, they knew I had a lot of experience in the flight training business, asked me to evaluate the uh, uh, airplane, and uh, I became their first demo pilot. Did you like it, the plane? you think it was oh, a I loved the plane. Love, wonderful handling characteristics. Um, but See, I, spent, I wouldn't, a lay person would not know that there's that much difference between one plane to the next plane. We get in cars and people do say these things are different and this is different, but I mean a car is a car and it runs a particular way. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, I see a picture of the airplane on our monitor there. There you go. Let's talk about that. The, okay. On the main screen. That's the airplane we're talking about. Um, this was in 93, and uh, Cessna hadn't produced their uh, 
uh, their trainer, the 152, for 15 or 20 years, there had been no new trainers. So that made this kind of revolutionary. The uh, airplane was also revolutionary in the fact it wasn't made out of metal. It was made out of what's referred to as composite material, basically high-tech plastic. And uh, it was clean and sleek, uh, which made it fast and efficient. Um, it's certainly lightweight by it, comparison. Uh, uh, had a mm -hmm. uh, big bubble canopy uh, with a wonderful view. And uh, that's one of the things I've always enjoyed about flying is seeing the world from above. So uh, now I get this job as the first demo pilot uh, for Diamond Aircraft, flying this airplane all over the country, showing it off to people. And uh, I'm flying over the uh, countryside at 2,000 feet, looking down at our landscape as it changes as you go from the Midwest Plains to the Rocky Mountains, crossing the desert to the uh, Sierra Mountains and the uh, uh, California coastline. And what a wonderful experience, you know? <laughs> uh, so I did that for, for uh, three years along the way, met some very interesting people. Um, uh, on, uh, I have the page of the book open here, and okay. uh, you'll see a picture of Dick Rutan. Doesn't mean a thing to me. Okay, well, I uh, had the airplane on display at the L.A. Fairgrounds, and this fellow walked up looking at it, and uh, I said, I recognize you, you're Dick Rutan. Dick Rutan is the fellow that flew an airplane that his brother designed around the world nonstop in nine and a half days. Wow. His... Uh, brother is what a, year was that when was that uh, 88 88 okay yep. his uh, brother uh, is a remarkable um, think out of the box aircraft designer that has created some very unusual designs um, so anyway um, I told uh, Dick Rutan I said next week I have this airplane out of the LA fairgrounds here and I will have it over Mojave Airport and you can fly it so uh, did he and, uh, yeah, he went up in it, and uh, so did Mike Melville. Mike Melville was chief test pilot uh, for his brother's, uh, Burt Rutan's operation. And what subsequently come of that is um, Mike Melville uh, was the first private individual into space. Uh, and I make a motion like this. Yes. It was a, a trajectory up and back down of a vehicle called Spaceship One. Right. Okay. Uh, and uh, so... Um, had they only had the Spudniks up before that? Oh, this was well after that. Was it but, well after uh, yeah. You know, the amazing thing about uh, uh, these events, the uh, Voyager Around the World Nonstop, Spaceship One, was all private money. It wasn't a government project. So they raised the money to do it? Yep. Wonderful. Um, so uh, anyway, I thought it was pretty neat that uh, Mike Melville ended up being the pilot of Spaceship One, and <laughs> I had uh, flown with him in our little diamond DA-20. So Let me hold the book again. This is really a nice book. It's, a, it's got a nice a little cover on it with good, great pictures, and <clears throat> the way our lighting's in here, it's a little bit hard to see, but the title of it is A Passion for Aviation, and you can only get this by dialing 801 Four seven one one three zero four, four seven one, thirteen zero four, at the Springville Spanish Fork Airport in Utah County. It's uh, actually in the city of, Sp of Spanish Fork. If you get off at the main exit in Spanish Fork, don't go down Main Street. Turn, go the other way. Go north, and the airport is out in that direction. And the Diamond Flight Center. Is it that airport? They use Hangar 49. Mm -hmm. They use the Hangar 49, and they've got a safety meeting coming up on Thursday, May 24th at 7 in the evening. <clears throat> They're going to be talking about traffic pattern operations. It's free to anyone that would like to come and attend. Uh, they're going to give a door prize away, which is this book. So if you'd like to have the book, show up and, uh, and see if you get lucky enough to win the book because that has taken a lot of time and created a really nice uh, gift for Father's Day for somebody, that a young man interested in flying, a youngster who enjoys model airplanes and uh, perhaps gets started like you do and like you did and wind up with your own business. Well, I love to fly and I love sharing it with people. 
Well, I can tell that, and I truly appreciate it. We've got about six minutes more. So if you have another story or two you'd like to share with us, that's just great. Um, right here, this page you turn to okay. uh, has a picture of Mike Melville, the Spaceship One, um, Paul Allen, and uh, uh, Bert Rutan. In regard to that story, um, Ron Smart uh, from the uh, UVU, UVSC uh, program at the time uh, and myself and... Uh, I guess there's four or five students from our UVSC program went out to Mojave for the flight of Spaceship One and got invited to a barbecue dinner at the Rutan Singer the night before the flight. So that was kind of a That was fun. You bet. Meet the nicest people sometimes. So I've had an opportunity to uh, uh, meet a, a lot of interesting people. Uh, but you're all, you're all crazy about flight. That's right. Do you have youngsters that have grown up and been involved in this or wanted to be children? Myself? Uh-huh. Uh, my, one of my two daughters uh, got a private pilot certificate and uh, then uh, uh, went into the legal field and didn't have time to To continue keep it flying? Current. Yeah. Well, now then I have to ask about your wife because she would be the mother of the children interested in flying. And about you, is she into this also? Or is she home nervous about everybody? No, <clears throat> no. Uh, Janice and I have been married five years. She's new to flying, and um, she has made a, a flight. And uh, but I think she prefers to stay on the ground. <laughs> a lot of women do, particularly if their loved ones are flying. Well, they well, stay on the ground and work. Okay. Real quick, because uh, a lot of uh, women, um, when they come out with their husbands or their uh, sons or daughters to ask about flight training, they say, what happens when the engine quits? <laughs> well, okay, what happens when the engine the quits? The most common cause of engine failure is running out of fuel. Oh. And it seems to me you don't have to be too smart. <laughs> Make sure there's enough fuel in the fuel tank. <clears throat> that does happen. I've, we've all heard about crashes. That that was why. Yeah. No, the, the airplanes are very well maintained, uh, very reliable. Uh, and you'd rather be in the air than on I-15. Oh, absolutely. Particularly at 5 to 6 yeah. <laughs> in the evening. I feel like my life's in my hands. I don't have to worry about somebody crossing that center line and, you know, being... Five or six feet away from, you know, sudden death. <clears throat> well, you're certainly safe, and you're safe in here, and I appreciate your coming. It's been a um, pleasure. Well, my pleasure, totally. I've been talking to Ed Helmick, H-E-L-M-I-C-K, and uh, he is the chief operating officer and one of the owners, right? Yep. Of the, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I've got something in the air in here, um, Diamond Flight Center. It is located at the Spanish Fork, uh, well, Springville Spanish Fork uh, Airport, uh, located actually in Spanish Fork. And I'm just tickled that you have come. I'm going to give your number one more time. If you're interested in just coming out to see what they're doing, can they do that? Just come and look at the oh, planes? Absolutely. Love talking talk about airplanes. Talk to you folks. And um, yep. maybe the interest is uh, um, not really bubbling up because they don't know how to get it, make it happen. But I'm sure coming out to talk to you. So let me give you a phone number. Make sure he, are you out there all the time? Yeah. <laughs> During the day. 801 471 1304. Give Ed a call. I, when I talked to him on the phone, he's so enthusiastic. I thought, gracious, this man really loves what he's doing. And we all know people that don't love what they're doing. But his enthusiasm came right through on the phone, and it has today. And uh, we appreciate you. This is Pat Sheranian signing off. <laughs>